Hey, this is part two going over carabiner elements. In part one, I showed you the basics of the application and how to download and import pre-made complex modifications from the web. In this video, I'll teach you how to modify these modifications that we downloaded and how to completely create your own. Uh, we'll go over a few of these here. So let's get started. We'll be looking at JSON, so you might need a little bit of an understanding of the JSON format. Uh, go ahead and open the configuration file. It's going to be located uh, if you go to miscellaneous and open config folder. You'll see carabiner.json here. This is your main configuration file. I'm going to open it with uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this is your configuration file. This is where all your configurations are. Uh, your complex modifications, your simple modifications, function keys, everything. So the Carabiner Elements application is basically a user interface for this configuration file. So if you see, I'll update this checkbox here and keep an eye here. Nice. Any change you make in this user interface is gonna update the configuration file. So this is where all of your actual logic is stored. So you pretty much only need to jump into the configuration file when you wanna create your own complex modifications or you wanna modify your current complex modifications. Everything else, it's much simpler just to use the user interface here. So let's jump back into the configuration file. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, so you can collapse everything in Visual Studio Code with uh, command K0 and we'll slowly start expanding global not important profiles okay profiles i have two objects in here and if i look at my profiles i have two profiles so i bet you this top one yep it's going to have a name default and that's my profile name and i bet you this other profile has a name of nothing correct and it is not selected so you can see it's just this user interface is basically this configuration file but easier to read continue with my default profile collapse this one uh, again don't really mess with any of this it's easier to use the user interface but for complex modifications this is where we have to jump into this configuration file we have parameters and rules so uh, if we look at the UI again go to complex we have parameters and rules parameters we'll get to in a minute rules these are your complex modifications so let's start with a simple one uh, sometimes i accidentally close a window with command w when i'm trying to save something with command s like so and i don't want to do that so let's remap command w to do nothing i have the description here which is command w to nothing it should show up in the ui right there and then manipulators this is where the logic goes we have a from key and a to key, and type is always basic for my use case. Uh, we go from key code W with a modifier, a mandatory modifier, so it must be included, of left command. And to get these uh, key code names, you will have to use the event viewer. And you could type W, you'll see the name is W. And if I do left command, you'll see left command. So that's how you get the codes for these modifications. So what this uh, modification does is it goes from left command W, as it says the from, uh, to nothing. And type is always basic for me. So if I do command W, nothing's going to happen. All right, let's move on. I wanted to remap my insert key because it's a joke. I hate that key. So now it does this. Let's take a look at how I got that to work. Uh, we have insert joke here. That's the description. Manipulator, I have one. Looks like we have a couple extra things going on in here. We go from some key, to if alone, to if held down, and type is still basic. So where are we going from? We're going from, well, insert, and I want no modifiers, mandatory to have none. To if alone is ran if you press the key alone with no other keys, obviously. And to if held down is triggered when you hold the key down for a certain amount of time. Uh, that time is set here and here. Um, this is the global settings for my profile. I can actually override these per complex modification if I wanted to. I'll show you that later. So if I hold down the insert key for 200 milliseconds, it'll do something different than if I press it alone. Expand to if alone. All right, so we have another field here called shell command. Uh, this can run any terminal-based application or command that you want. To figure this out, I just downloaded a sound effect, placed it on my desktop, and used some kind of thing that's built into my terminal 
to play a sound. So to figure this out, I did this. Pretty simple. And then let's take a look at the 2F held down. If I hold it down, it just plays at a slower rate. Now if I press insert, it does this. And if I hold insert, So now with the shell command, you can basically have your keyboard do anything because I'm pretty sure you can do anything with the terminal. So if you can figure out how to run something via the terminal, then you can do it with your keyboard. Um, another example I used the shell command with was the open screenshot app with print screen key, which is this key. If I tap it, it's gonna do a screenshot with the screenshot application native to Mac. If I hold it, it'll use a different screenshot application that I like to use. So to set this one up, I went from print screen key, which I got from the event viewer when I press that key, um, to if alone, if I just tap it alone, it's going to open the screenshot application with a open A, which is a way to open up applications from the terminal on Mac. And if I hold it down, it's going to run a shortcut with these two modifiers and two, which triggers that uh, other application I use. This is a little unique because I overrode one of the parameters, the two if held down threshold. So you can see I don't really have to hold this down very long for it to trigger the second functionality. Uh, that's because I overrode this value. Uh, the default global value would be is right here with uh, under parameters, which is 200 milliseconds. That was a little too slow, so I overrode that to 50 milliseconds. If I were to remove this parameter section here under this modification, it would just use the global values here. So it's cool that you can override your global values. So a quick press is gonna use the screenshot app and a quick hold is gonna use my other app. I can also tap into Alfred with an Apple script to access some system commands. So I set up this uh, pause to sleep displays or sleep Mac if held, open that up. I go from the pause key, pause key, uh, to if alone, if it's alone, it's gonna run this shell command again, which basically lets you do anything. Uh, you may not understand this, but this is how you run an Apple script in a terminal. You use this. And then I got this information actually from Alfred. So I set up an external trigger and inside that external trigger, you give it an identifier and then you basically copy this sample code that it gives you and paste it in here. I use uh, sleep. I put my system command to sleep with a confirmation box. So pause, it's going to make sure I want to sleep. If I hit okay, my computer will go to sleep. And I do the same for sleep displays, uh, no confirmation on that. Oh yeah, and the uh, sleep displays is if I hold down the key. Maybe none of this makes sense. Let's uh, move on to something else that doesn't involve Alfred. The hyper key, I use this all the time to trigger my custom shortcuts. So go caps lock to hyper, which is holding down these four modifier keys. Just come to manipulators, you'll set up an object here and you'll say, hey, I wanna go from caps lock, uh, no modifiers two key code left shift so left shift and some modifiers so these three modifiers so basically change this to hold these three pretty simple uh, if it's alone for example if i just press caps lock and no other key with it it's going to be the escape key so we can actually see that if we open the event viewer so caps lock if i just tap it it still runs the modifier keys but it also runs escape modifiers aren't going to affect anything here also, it's interesting, uh, there's actually three macOS shortcuts that use these uh, four modifiers by default, and you can disable them by, you know, remapping. You see, I go from comma, and then these four modifier keys, that would have started system diagnosis. Uh, that was quite annoying, accidentally hitting, so these are all disabled, along with period, comma, backslash, with uh, caps lock, now don't do anything. So that saves you from accidentally triggering these weird system diagnosis things. Uh, Vim directional keys, this one's pretty cool. So you go up, down, left, right with the uh, IJKL as long as you're holding the hyper key. So that one's quite simple. You just go from 
modifiers, left shift, left command, left control, left option, which is what caps lock does now. So if I hold caps lock and hit K, this is the from section, and then it's gonna go to up arrow, pretty simple. And same with down, left, right. We uh, updated shifts functionality, uh, two things actually. We have it toggle caps lock because our caps lock isn't caps lock anymore. So to toggle caps lock, we hold left shift, right shift. You can see the caps lock light, left shift, right shift. And we also set it up to move forward and backward by one word. And I separated those two out just in case someone didn't want one or they wanted the other. So you can see the toggle caps lock pressing left shift, right shift, and the shifts move forward and backward by one word are separated. You could put them in the same manipulator, but you would have to have them both enabled at once. So uh, this way you can enable or disable one or the other. Maybe you don't want the uh, move forward, backward one word and you want to toggle caps lock, but pretty simple. Let's see, toggle caps lock. We go, uh, we go from left shift uh, with right shift to caps lock. So if I hold left shift and then I hit right shift, it's going to toggle caps lock. And if I press left shift alone, it's just going to be left shift. Great. And then shift moves forward and backward by one word. This one's pretty dumb. Just go from right shift to right shift. I'm a guessing. Yep. And then if it's alone, option right arrow, which moves you forward and backward by one word. Okay. And then we get to the O launcher. This one is a bit complicated. It uses a, a variable. With O Launcher, if you watched part one, you see that you can launch applications holding O and then the letter of the application or however you have it set up. I have O and I set up to I term. So if I hold O, I, it would open I term. And then O, C would open Visual Studio Code. Um, what else? O, K, Carabiner. Carabiner. So it's a, it's a quick way to switch between applications. All right, let's look at how to open Visual Studio Code with OC using O Launcher. So it actually takes two of these objects here to set that up properly. To set this up, you can see we have a new field here called conditions. Conditions is required to be true, otherwise none of this is gonna run. So it's like an if else statement basically. There's a type called variable if. So if the variable named launcher mode v4 is value is one, then it can run this logic, go from key code C to open Visual Studio Code. You can create variables and actually view them in the event viewer. Uh, variables, you go down to the bottom, you see a variable section. I have my launcher mode v4. Uh, you set these variables up in the JSON configuration file, not in here, but you can view them easily in here. So let's take a look at the second part of this O launcher to launch Visual Studio Code. Uh, we'll scroll down to the second object here. All right, so we're going to go from modifier, no modifiers. Simultaneous, this is a new field as well. Simultaneous means you hold two keys down at the same time. So in this example, OC, that's simultaneous. Um, you have options for simultaneous. So the key down order has to be O to C. You can't do C O uh, and this is strict. So if you set it to strict, it has to be O C and the key up order. If it's strict inverse, it needs to be O comes up first and then C. So it has to be O C and then let up C and then O. Um, so to after key up. So after I've let my keys up, uh, we're going to set a variable. We have set variable now. So you'll have to check the documentation out. There's so many fields I can't go over. Uh, all of them, uh, but you can set variables and you're going to set a variable named launcher mode v4, which we saw earlier down here, and we're going to set its value to zero. So back to zero. So we go from simultaneous OC to set variable launcher mode v4 to a value one. So if I hold those two keys down, this should switch to one. Let's try it. OC. Okay, you can't really see it. I'm gonna keep O held down and open up Carabiner event viewer. All right, you see the value is a one still. So if I let up the O, it goes back to zero. So this may be a bit complicated, but you can mess around in here and you'll figure it out. Once you trigger that command, it's going to run a shell command and open Visual Studio Code. So again, you hold down O, you hold down C, it goes to set a variable to one and it runs a shell command to open Visual Studio Code. Now this variable is one right now. If we scroll up and we look at this first section, it says 
condition, if variable is one, we go from code C to command shell open visual studio code. So I may not be explaining this super clearly, but if you hold O C, our variable is set to one right now. And then if I let up, our variables back to zero. So we can't launch anything anymore. Anyways, you don't have to set up these manually. There's a cool script that the uh, guy who created this application actually provided. And I did have to modify it a bit to get it to work on my computer. So I'll share that script with you in the description. So check that out. Uh, let me show you an example of what it looks like. So this is a Ruby script and it was created by, uh, who is the creator? One sec. Ah, this guy. I think he's the creator. Anyways, uh, this script is a Ruby script. You can run in your terminal and it will output all the JSON you need and you just copy and paste it into your configuration file. So this is for the O launcher. Uh, you just need to update this section right here with whatever applications you want to launch and whatever key codes you want to use. So you see, I just have a few set up here as an example. Let's see, OI is going to open up iTerm. OI, great. And OC opens up Visual Studio Code. That is pretty simple. So once you get this section filled out, all you have to do is open a terminal. So you run Ruby and then the name of the file, you'll hit enter and then it would have spit out all of the JSON that you need for your O launcher setup. You will copy it, go back to your configuration file, collapse everything, make sure you're in the right profile. So I'm in my default profile, complex modifications, rules, and then you can just paste it wherever you want. So you can add a new one if you just do comma, paste, now you have all your new O launcher rules set up and you didn't have to do much. So that's very convenient. Again, that's in the description. And I think that's enough to get you guys started. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Sorry that I probably confused you. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Peace.